Okay, in this video, I'm going to discuss uh, discuss something in regard to the accelerated linear motion, and it's, it's something that's quite important. And basically, we're going to be talking about the area under a curve, and equating that to a distance. So first, we we know that um, distance is equal to speed by time. So we'll say s for distance is equal to speed by time. Uh, I don't know if you if you've seen this kind of triangular notation before. So just to show you that, uh, it's about, uh, underneath the line will be multiply or divide, and uh, say this way will be multiply. So you'll say s the the distance is equal to v times time. Uh, you'll say that the dis the speed is equal to distance over time, and you can say that the the time is equal to your distance divided by your 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 speed. So that's the first thing anyway. Now you can see that distance s is related to your your speed and your time. That's the that's the first thing. Now to carry on, if you're graphing something, uh, let's say it's an x y plane like this. All right, you have your x y plane, you have x and you have y. And when you graph something, let's say you have a graph like that. It's often useful to be able to get the area underneath your curve. So that should be the area under this particular curve. And the reason is, your area often corresponds to another quantity. So say for example, if I had a time and velocity. So I'm plotting the, the velocity versus, versus time. The quantity that you will get by getting the area is your distance. Your distance, and that is that. The reason that is is due to your formula. The way velocity and time are related, you will get by getting the area underneath your curve, you will get your distance. So that's quite important. Now, in terms of um, your, I suppose your mathematical skills, if you had a curve like this, that's quite diff. It's difficult to get the uh, area of that curve. Y is equal to f of x. Now, I don't know if you've done this yet. I'm assuming that if you only started your applied maths course. You're, in, I suppose, we'll say October or November of fifth year, and you haven't come across a thing called uh, integration. Now, I, I'm not going to talk about integration at all. I'm, what, I will, what I will say is that integration will give you the area underneath the curve. So, uh, and it, it'll do that for every curve. So it'll do it for a complicated curve like this or a curve like that. It'll do it for all of them. However, if you're trying to get the area of a, of, of a curve, we'll say in your in your applied maths course, and you're only introducing yourself to these things, the areas you're going to be getting are things like you know rectangles, squares. Oh well, that's a rectangle as well. You know bits of triangles like that. You'll be getting your the areas of fairly regular shapes, and for that reason, it, you know getting areas will be quite simple. However, like I said, if you're looking, if you want to get the area of a complicated curve, like that, for example. Uh, you'd, you'd want the area under the curve, should I say, you will require um, basically a skill of integration. So uh, that's, the, that's, that's the main thing, but like I said, you won't, be, you won't be doing difficult curves, you'll be doing quite simple curves. So like I said, the area underneath the curve uh, can often equate to another physical quantity. If you're plotting velocity versus time, and the quantity underneath your curve would be your distance. Uh, that's all I've got to say about that. I hope that's uh, I hope that's useful to you. Please subscribe to my channel and pass it on to your friends.